Hello, this is Brad Wild, and today we're going to take the Zebo 737-800 down to Ontario from San Jose. San Jose is at the bottom tip of the San Francisco Bay, and Ontario is east of LA. So the uh, airport codes are Kilo Sierra Juliet Charlie. Ontario is Kilo Oscar November Tango. Now the Zebo is called a mod, and it is a wrapper for the default 737 that comes with X-Plane. In other words, they've added some extra goodies to it to make it a little bit more immersive, and it is very convincing. If you are familiar with the EADT 737, there are some similarities, uh, which has made this a little bit easier to get used to. But I have yet to have a successful flight from takeoff to touchdown. I tried it yesterday and XP just stopped. <laughs> Not sure why. Uh, I am running XP to zero R1 so it's a release version but I don't think it is the official 11.2 uh, that um, we're all waiting for so that might have been a cause a word about installation without giving you a complete guide if you go to explain.org and sponsored aircraft, you'll see that there's a forum dedicated to this aircraft and support of it. And if you go to the very first page and down about the ninth item, there is info, installation, and download links. And if you go over there, you'll see a complete description, disclaimers, caveats, descriptions of all the releases. By the way, that this aircraft has a very active uh, development cycle so it's updated quite often there are some installation instructions and then links for the downloads so just pay attention to that stuff by the way I found out if you're on a Mac you need to make sure when you copy those files over that you use the copy and overwrite option Mac users will know what that means. All right, back to our flight. So let's take a look at our map, skyvector.com. I've plugged in our airport of origin and destination and have a nice straight line, which will change, as you know. So from the Bay Area down to Southern California. Going over to Flight Aware, I've picked a couple of actual flights that we can use. And those of you who are familiar with how I do things, I'm interested in this route here and the decoded version of it. And um, I'm especially looking at the transition points. So here we have the airport, then the SID, transition, transition, star, and destination. And I want to make sure that when I plug all this in, these waypoints or fixes all show up on the MCDU. So before leaving FlightAware, I want to grab that flight plan. I'm going to grab the one that's not in white because it will show up white in Sky Vector. So cut that to my clipboard, head over to Sky Vector, paste it in the flight plan window here, and click anywhere, and you'll see that it now maps out all the waypoints no longer a straight line 
Now before I leave Sky Vector, I want to pull up our SID, which is Techie 3, and see if there's anything I should know about it. So we'll be taking off on runway 30 right and doing a right turn to, I guess I'll call this Spence, to Techie, and then on down to Lotion. Reading some of the descriptions here, uh, take off runway 30 right. I'm going to cross mill points and at uh, 900 feet, and then a right term, turn and cross Spence at 5,000 feet. So I will set that on my altitude uh, before I take off so that I will climb to 5,000 feet first and then level off before I get clearance from ATC. And this is pretty standard procedure here at this airport. Most of the SIDs require that uh, initial altitude of 5,000 feet. All right, back to the airplane and our cockpit. We are cold and dark. Now you refuel this plane like you do all the default X-plane aircraft, and that is on the admin screen, you just customize it and add the fuel you want. I've added a little over two hours of fuel. As you know, in the jar, you have to pull up a fuel truck, and then the EADT, you have to do, um, you have to enter it um, here in the cockpit. So that has been done. So like all flights, we start with the battery. By the way, I'm using a checklist and I've listened to several other people do a cold and dark start and I've looked at the manuals and I feel like this is a pretty good uh, process or uh, method so I'll start here with the battery and the next thing will be standby power to auto and we cover that. Then we go with ground power. It's a momentary switch down. On the DC source I'll change that to battery and for the AC, I'll put this on ground power, and so our passengers can uh, recharge their iPhones. We'll add some cabin utilities, and I'll turn the lights up. Nice backlighting. Then moving down this center panel. I'm going to arm the emergency lights. The no smoking is inoperative in this version, so I won't touch it. But auto for fas fasten seat belts. And that's all I'm going to do uh, on this screen at the moment. The overhead panel, I should say. So let me drop down to the FMC, and let me show you something that will really speed things up for you. If you click on the advanced feature here, and then other config, across from the L1 button, you'll see three different options for the amount of time it takes to align the IRS. And I'm going to just go short. Keep it simple. And if I go up here, to the IRS display. I flip this over to heading and status. Flip this to align. Align. And when it says align, I'm going to go ahead and flip to nav. And you can see that I have one minute. Of course, this is not very realistic. Otherwise, it takes about 12 minutes. So I just want to keep the process moving. Continuing in this upper panel, 
or overhead panel. We definitely want to get the packs going and they're on auto so I can assume that there is circulation for all the folks in the back. I'm going to turn the logo light on. This is a light that shines on the tail. Just good branding when you're on the ground. And turn on our position light. No need to turn on uh, any of these others except for the anti-collision. We'll leave the strobe off for right now. I want to make sure that my fuel pumps are off just to avoid uh, any accidents. And we're going to just leave this panel as it is for right now and drop back to our FMS. So we start with the left one button and then pause ENT and the first thing we need to do is enter our coordinates here so first of all I'll clear that our scratch pad go to the next page click on this left four button which writes that to the scratch pad then back to our previous page and place it in there and you'll see when you do that this suddenly lights up and is active and I'll go ahead and put in the airport from which we are departing I'm not going to worry about the gate, but then go over to our route. While I'm here, I'm going to just crank up some lights. Whoops. Uh, it seemed a little dark. There are also some lights down in this area to light up the center panel or pedestal so we now have some backlighting here probably a good thing to shut the door And once that's done, you'll see that the light is off and door is secure. All right, back to the FMS and we'll continue putting in our route here. Boy, I wish there was a keyboard option here. Go much faster if I could do it on my keyboard. No company route, but we do have a runway, 30 right. I'm not going to save the route. And the flight number is just AA111. Not a critical thing. Then over to our performance. And just some clicking. I'm going to go with reserves of 5, cost index, middle ground here of 50. We will fly at flight level 2800. I'm sorry, flight level 280. Yes. And click execute. And then at cruise. Our winds are at 280. And it's at 40 knots. 59 degrees here on the ground. Click N1. Again, 59. And you tap this twice to get your Celsius um, equivalent. 
I am not going to derate uh, the aircraft other than uh, go with the default here. And you'll notice that um, this gets filled in. I'm not real sure, to be perfectly honest, um, what I would do to change that, but uh, I'm just going to go with the default. Over to takeoff, go with flaps of five, so that's really three clicks. Just click that, and notice our trim is 4.4. .4. Notice we've got our speeds here, really low V2 speed, and I'll be plugging that in shortly. So that completes the engine part of things, systems part of things. Now let's put in our route, and notice it conveniently has departure here. So we'll click our departure. Our runway's already been entered for us. Click next page to get to Techie 3. And Lotion is our transition. Click Route and Activate and Execute. And now we click the, the Departure Arrival button and then Ontario Arrival. And we are going to be using the Ziggy 7 star. And our transition, if you remember, is Echo Hotel Foxtrot. And the runway will be ILS 26 left. And our transition is going to be Pettis. And we click Execute. Let me just show you why I did what I did. Go down here to Ziggy 7. So we'll be coming uh, from the northwest. We'll cross over Echo Hotel Foxtrot. That's our transition point. And then here's Ziggy and here's Ontario. So we'll be making this rather long looping 180 into the airport. The actual approach chart looks like this. And you can see our initial approach fix at Pettis. So that's why I dialed that in. So hopefully that makes sense back to the airplane. Now we can go to our legs and cycle through them and look for any discontinuities. And We have one here and this just means that there isn't a fix between these two. Uh, the system gives us an opportunity to put one in there but I'm just going to go from transition to transition so I can Click this button on the left and add it where the discontinuity is and click exec and we should be good. Now we can check this on our ND navigational display by flipping our mats, map switch on the FS panel so it's now plane and or plan I'm sorry and you can see the beginning of our route here and you just click the step button that shows up when you flip that switch to plan you can see our top of climb indicated our two transitions And then our approach into Ontario. And this is our holding pattern if we have a missed approach. 
So it looks relatively accurate. <laughs> and we can flip this back to map. So our route is in. I'm going to move across my MCA panel. So activate flight director. Um, auto throttles. And this gets set to my V2 speed, which was 133. And heading will be um, the runway heading, which is going to be 306. That initial altitude is 5,000. So once we hit that point and level off, I'll dial in our final cruise altitude and click the little button to the right of this knob, Altitude Intervention. So that takes care of our MCA panel. Nothing here with the exception of you know, you can always test the lights make sure everything's lighting up properly and put our auto brake on to rejected takeoff or RTO we could set the radios but I'll probably wait until we are in the air I want to set our transponder um, after I get the engines cranked up and we're ready to taxi. Alright, it's time to call the tow, get our APU started, and I do it in that order because it takes a while, takes so long for the tow to show up. So I'm using better pushback. I've got it set to just do a simple 90 degree backup. Corona cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready and we are ready so start pushback so I'll release this when he asks for it but in the meantime fuel on for our APU momentary start and we'll watch the EGT come up so low pressure oil shows something is coming up and while we're waiting we can just go down our panels here that beeping relates to activities in better pushback so window heat probes on electrical Pumps on, trim on, set altitude for our oxygen. That's set. So now our APU is up. You can see that um, it's settling down to around four. So Turn on the generators. Release the brake. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Turn on the APU bleeds. Engine bleeds. All fuel pumps on. Turn off the packs for startup. And let's get started with engine number two. You can see our N2 coming up here. And we can add fuel. You add fuel about 25, but I think it works over a wide range and let's go ahead and start engine 
number one. This will flip back to auto in a second, but you can see that the generator has been uh, activated. You can see our N2 coming up. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Set the brake. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Add fuel. And we'll wait for this to flip off. This blue light to come on. And then we can, I'll go ahead and start generator. As soon as that flips off, second one, flip this to generator one. We can now flip off our APU. And let's get our packs back on. APU oh, bleed off. And there he goes. So we're ready to taxi. So let's turn on our taxi lights. Probably should have done that sooner. Add our flaps in and our transponder to TA. And we'll release our parking brake. Kind of hazy here. All right, at the end of runway 30 right. And a few things to do before we take off. How about landing lights and taxi, yeah, taxi lights off. Logo light off. Strobe on. Leave anti-collision where it's at. Scan this for any red lights or issues double check across our MCA all looks good and now it's just a matter of setting our transponder T-A-R-A And we have been cleared for takeoff. So flaps five. Approaching three zero right. And start our clock. Runway three zero right. All right, so apply power and at fifty percent, let's try toga. There we go, N one FMA showing N one heading selected toga. Eighty knots. Rotate. Easy, don't want to strike the tail. 
positive rate, gear up. And we will climb to about 400 feet. And then we can begin our automated flight. Flaps one. So we see CMD here. Now I noticed on a couple of takeoffs that nose would come up rather precariously. So we can flip this auto brake to off, gear to off, final notch of flaps. out the window and taking a look at our ND. So this is mill punt points. Not quite sure how you say that fix. As you know, a lot of them are weird. So we're coming around. Flip this to uh, 20 miles. And we're coming up on 5,000 feet, and as you know, we will level off there and fly out to... Oh, what did I call this? <laughs> Spencer's? <laughs> Spartan? Anyway, Sierra Papatango, November Sierra. So we are at 5,000 feet, and we'll just hold here for a second. Quite hazy. I have the visibility set low. Keep my FPS up, my frame rates. Not even sure where the airport is. I think it's over here somewhere. And we can go ahead and get this set for flight level 280. So looking here, you can see we're coming up on the waypoint and beginning or getting back on track here and our FMA is showing that the speed is managed. So to begin our final ascent you click altitude intervention. You see N1 here, N1 on the FMA. You see things start to spool up and the nose comes up. Now I've turned off SkyMax Pro only because I pick up about 10 frames per second. I know that seems crazy. So the clouds aren't quite as natural looking but it doesn't mean that the weather isn't properly depicted. In fact sometimes I find the default weather actually is more accurate even though it doesn't look quite as nice. So everything looks about the way it should.
passengers don't have much of a view, do they? It's out the right side and the left side. Pretty hazy. So we are at 10,000 feet. Hear a little beep. And we can go ahead and turn off landing lights, retract them. And continue our climb as we as the speed bug climbs up a little bit above 10,000 feet we can exceed the 250 knot indicated speed so I'm gonna take a short break stand by and we're just about to flight level 180 and we all know what happens then we go to standard barrow and continue our climb so the haze has dissipated at this altitude and I don't know if that's just an x-plane thing because you'd think it would just be hazy <laughs> anyway but uh, it is a nice view I'll give it that much and the passengers enjoy it a whole lot more and frame rates are about 23 and if I turned on SkyMax Pro it would probably drop to 16 easy so I'm just gonna put up with the way it is if I were to eliminate all clouds it would probably get even better now I have one notch of anti-aliasing so if you look across the edge here it's relatively smooth if I turned it off it would be sawtoothed why don't I show you what my settings are so go over here and you can see I've got one notch of anti-aliasing and th this is actually pretty nice. If you can handle that, I would at least have it set there. But I have pretty good visual effects, texture quality, um, reflection detail. I have a little bit. It could be better, but I'm pretty happy with it. And a fair number of world objects. So um, those are my settings. Nothing fancy. I would love to have one of those... Uh, gaming computers with a boatload of uh, RAM and VRAM. This machine that I have is relatively new. It's got an i5 processor, not the i7, but I've got 8 gig of VRAM and 32 of regular memory it is a 500 gig solid state drive so things load very quickly just check our progress here so here's our top of descent looks like we're going to be a little bit shy it's moving <laughs> but this green arc shows where we should reach our flight level 280 oh those clouds don't look terrible Another place that you notice the anti-aliasing is here. If I were to turn it off, you would see a lot of sawtoothing here. So this integrates the airplane with the background a lot more naturally.
nice reflection off the uh, the screen here. Very well rendered cockpit. Looks uh, almost photo real. So our rate of climb is slowing <laughs> as we inch our way towards 28, flight level 280. I'm sorry, I almost said 28,000. N1 meaning we've got power. We're up to 96%, I guess you would say. This ground power light uh, is finally off. I wasn't sure when that would go off, and I'm not sure when it did. So we should get, uh, we should have gotten a, a buzz here at 2700, or at flight level 270 indicating another thousand feet to go but here comes our altitude bug we should hear a chime and now it says FMC speed manage speed and the nose is coming down speeds picking up a little bit we can put a little more range on our ND so here's our transition from the SID and here's our transition to the STAR and we can turn off seat belts although I suppose auto will do that I'm not sure the exact uh, way that works, but all right. Well, join me in a little bit. Uh, it's just cruising now. Sit back, have a have a soft drink, and um, we'll touch base in a bit. All right, we're in a turn, just passing our transition from our SID whoops hard to see it that way so we're headed to Echo Hotel Foxtrot which is the transition to our star take a look at the map we're right here so this is California's Central Valley and we're gonna go right over uh, Bakersfield which you've probably heard of so we're over uh, all farmland basically and, um, and then we'll get into some small hills head over Palmdale just a little bit southwest of Edwards Air Force Base where the space shuttle used to land and then over the San Bernardino Mountains and into Ontario. Our passengers are seeing the sunset. And out the front moon coming up the bizarre black contrail of X-Plane 11 
but uh, beautifully rendered airplane, I will say that. All right, back to you as we reach our top of descent. So we've got a little ways to go before we get to our top of descent. One thing I want to do on our FMC is uh, change or program in our approach speeds because it comes in a little hot. So I just want to actually customize this and slow the airplane down a little more dramatically because it really doesn't do it on its own and it probably should. Um, so we'll see if this doesn't work out. So when we get to Pettis we should be about 160. We want to come over the fence about 140. Next page. Um, so this should be fine. Uh, we should be able to control it from there. So we'll see what happens. Let's take a look at our approach plate. 26 left. And our initial altitude should be 3600 feet. So we can go ahead and set that up. Now in the Boeing, the descent begins automatically. As you know, in the, the buses, the 320, the one I'm most familiar with, you have to actually begin the descent yourself. But in the Boeing, it does it for you. So it's going to be dark when we land. Hope you don't mind. It's hard to gauge uh, your takeoff time. Need to do a little bit better job of that, I suppose. So we can see some lit up runways below. Not sure what runway that is or what airport that is. All right, um, our speed is, or our throttles are starting to come down as we reach top of descent. Something's going on here. Speed bug is dropping. Finally, we have vertical descent. Our altitude is armed. So the next VOR is Palmdale, and we should be at 18.5. Put the seat belts on. And it's going to be dark. But the, uh, the instrument panel seems to be well lit got everything turned up here. There is a floodlight. I'm not sure what that does. And I'm not sure if we need it. it. Might be for when you're on the ground. And the other thing we should do is set our radios. 
111.35 is the localizer frequency. And I was practicing, but I don't know if it's still on there. One eleven thirty five. And we'll put it on both. Both sides. Just double check. Yep. One eleven thirty five. So our nav radio is set for the localizer. Passengers are starting to see lights on the ground. Coming up on Palmdale. So I'll be back in just a second. So I already passed through flight level 180 and set my barrow, which is standard. And we're coming up on one of the decel uh, points. So what will happen is the speed bug will drop to 250 in anticipation of the 10,000 foot restriction San Bernardino Mountains off in the distance so we'll turn to the right the Highway 10 pass cuts through here. Now that's interesting. Not sure what that was all about. <laughs> anyway, there's um, an interstate, Interstate 15, that takes you from Southern California out to Vegas and beyond. And it cuts through this pass here. I'm just checking the lighting and I think it's good. That's for our circuit breakers on the other side behind us. So we're getting into some haze. So you can see that our speed bug dropped to 250. Right under the cloud deck. Very hazy. And you can see um, Interstate 15 winding its way through that pass. And we're coming up on 10,000 feet, so we all know what that means. Need the lights on. That's interesting, that lit up there. So you can see how it comes up through that pass out of Orange County. And Ontario's just off screen, but behind the mountain, San Gabriel Mountains. And 
let's cut our range down to 20 miles. Interesting view. The Union Pacific Railroad also winds up through that pass and uh, a lot of the enthusiasts uh, go there to photograph trains. You can see them alongside the road. And that goes off to Vegas. So descending below 10,000 and hilltop 230 and the speed bug has set itself to 230. But I'm not seeing Maybe we need a little speed break to get us down there. Speed break is now on. As we come over the San Bernardino Mountains, Lake Arrowhead, into what they call the Inland Empire. Yeah, we're just going right over those mountains. Um, so we are slowing down. 200. I believe this is Ontario out here. So we're right over San Bernardino. And we can start thinking about our approach. And Ziggy. So our speed bug is dropping, but um, I think we need a little bit of an assistance here from our speed brake. The other thing I'm concerned about is exactly when I want to click my approach button. And we can add a notch of flaps as we reach our, where it says up, and that will slow us down. In the JAR aircraft, that is called the green dot speed. So let's retract our speed brakes. Uh, 
Another notch of flaps. And as we come up on Pettis, I'm going to go ahead and click Approach. And notice our localizer and glide slope. So setting these speeds on the FMS doesn't really do much good. Although the engines are spooled all the way down, I guess it's just a matter of trying to slow this airplane down as we descend. And here we go. And once we're established on the localizer, I'll click our second autopilot I thought that's how you did it I thought they were both supposed to be on or maybe I'm thinking jar and we can put our gear down at the outer marker And it says FMC speed, so I'm going to go ahead and override that. And now as we intercept the guide glide slope, guide slope, <laughs> I always mess that up. So I guess I have to agree with my friend Steve and admit that um, it requires a little bit more manual intervention than I thought. Two more notches of flaps. And we can turn on our taxi lights, get ready for that. and our logo light now is that the outer marker? I thought I saw that before little bit of a crosswind there. And this is the 10 here and the 210 up here. I think this is called the 60, but it's been a while since I lived in Southern California. So, flaps full. And our localizer and glide slope bugs are nailed. Let's put on our auto brake. And if you look at our Pappy lights, we're right on the money. Approaching two, six, left. By the way, this is a little plug-in. Did I say that? Um, I'll have to... I can't remember the name of it, but I'll have to let you know so you can try it.
So it looks like our localizers are off a little bit. Well, no auto land. <laughs> we bounce along the runway here. All right, well, that was not all that great, was it? So we'll have to do some some practice runs. Caution on taxiway. On taxiway. Yeah, I know. I'm going a little fast, aren't I? All right. Well, let's start cleaning up the airplane. So I thought I'd save you some taxi time. And we'll just park this. I don't have my marshaller out here. I suppose I should have killed the lights, but I don't want to reach up now. Blinding all the people there in the... Uh, in the lounge. So now it's just a matter of shutting it down and that's a very simple process. Just cut power. Whoops, I should have turned ground power on first, huh? So that's my first outing that I've had the nerve to actually videotape. So um, forgive me if um, there was anything I did that was too offensive. <laughs> so... Um, if you have any questions, comments, I'm sure you will leave them below. Till next time.